So hello everybody again. Let's start. My name is Alexander, Alexander Hart. I'm from Germany and I'm professional scrum trainer since around three years and started collecting my badges in 2011 when I recognized uh, that Scrum Alliance uh, gave me less options to validate my learning. So as you can see, I call myself a batch hunter because over the time I collected nearly mostly every batch you can collect and it was like a sport for me, very exciting journey. So um, I started my agile journey in 2003, I would say. My background is a developer and over the time I thought it's really good for me to, to be more involved in all the topics that uh, are concerning the behavior and the process on everything that is agile. Mm, good, so coming to the, the rules of this webinar, there are a few things I would like to let you know. First of all, so you are mute. Actually, and if you have a question, discuss with me or the function. And um, F like some and in the end we have a final so over or some when later soon you will receive all the slides with all the information on it so as you can see the slides are a little bit text heavy and so it's very good for you that afterwards you also will get the slides by your hand. I'm from Germany and I'm happy to start the information of this webinar now. So it's all about the professional Scrum Master 1 certification and also about the training and your path and how we can help you on your journey being more agile and using Scrum. So the professional one master certification, the webinar, what is our objective? So the objective is to create some kind of awareness about the certification and also provide you me as a trainer uh, that can help you on your journey to ask some questions or to give you guidelines and everything else that will also help you not only on your certification assessments but also on your journey in general as a professional scrum participant and i really appreciate to help people on their journey. So what's our topics? We have a lot of bullets here. I go through them shortly. So the professional Scrum Master 1 assessment, the credential and the value, the certification pre-request, the professional Scrum Master training, the certification assessment, the certification pass, and then there is a topic scrum.org in general, the accreditation body and its advantages. And in the end, there are some useful tips, open questions, feedback, and then we are done. So at this point, you have anything that you want to discuss, please let me know. Okay, I will move on forward.
the credential and the value of the PSM1 assessment. So I think it's like a fundamental uh, that you need, that you demonstrate, that you understand what Scrum is about, uh, self-organization, empiricism, the basic rules, and you can see it as a driving license, I would say. So you're not the best driver, you have some experience, but you know how to handle Scrum in reality and have the background, what is the vision of Scrum. And the certificate is industry recognized and gives you, I would say, better job opportunities. As I showed you, I have a lot of badges and in the interviews, the most people was really, they liked that I have a lot of badges and it shows me some credentials that I have. And yes, the other point is that everyone can see that you have this credential. Uh, you will have a profile on the scrum.org website um, and this is verified. So you can show it to colleagues, managers, and potential employees that you can prove that you have this basic knowledge. <clears throat> and um, as with test, every time you pass this test, I think you can be proud of a little bit more of yourself. And um, <clears throat> what really helped me during this assessments was um, when I was knowing the, the vision of Scrum, then I had something like a North Star that guides me in the challenging situations that I had uh, during I used Scrum in, in the real work environments. So uh, when it came to the point, I had a hard thing that I had to, in concerns and I was not sure how to react right. I had this idea how it should be regarding the questions and the answers I had in my head and can thought about what would be the best thing that I can achieve to make things nearly as they should be in the assessments. And another point is thinking about the answers and uh, the, the possible things that you made wrong during the assessments that really helps you to, to, to bring up all the pieces, all the elements of Scrum together in, the, in your head. And you can see it probably as a puzzle. So even or jigsaw, like we say also, uh, that when only all pieces fit right together, then you have the, um, the whole picture of Scrum in your head. And this took really some time for me when I think it was after the PSM3 assessment when I thought, okay, now I really had a good understanding of Scrum and how it fits everything together. And how these assessments really help you on this path, getting this jigsaw together. And of course, a last very point, Every time you do this assessment, you, uh, you strengthen your Scrum Master. So the Scrum.org assessments are all excellent tools for validated learning. Um, it's not really about only the assessment, but to validate if you have the understanding and could use this in reality for, for the good things happen. And um, very important thing also, I think, once you made the assessment, uh, it doesn't get invalid. So once you earn it, you will have it for the rest of your life. So do you have some questions here? Feel free to type whatever you want. And then we have here the next slide. It's a certification prerequisite. So most things I copied from the, the scrum.org 
website. It's like official um, information. And yes, the assessment, they say it's difficult. I would say not say it's too difficult, but it's also not easy. And uh, you normally could not do it without preparation. How you can preparate best or good, make you better, we will see later. And um, the really fundamental is knowing the Scrum Guide, reading the Scrum Guide, knowing the topics of the Scrum Guide, and that you work with the open assessment, that you have a good feeling about the question that will be in the real assessment later. But normally that is not really enough, or you are also very, very uh, mature and have good knowledge already, I think you don't need other prerequisites. So then we have here a, uh, a page that is called Professional Scrum Competencies. And um, I won't go follow this link now, but there is a, a longer list of the topics and subject areas that you can look on to find out where are the things that you should learn. And then uh, the next point is about uh, um, like case studies. So um, that it's not only uh, something like like uh, you have to know regarding the rules in some way you have to apply the rules and it's like situational questions where you have to find the best answers knowing what the scrum guide says that you know the elements the rules and so on know about empiricism and self-organization and so on and then you have to think about what will be the best answer in the case in the situation that is described there in the answers. And additionally to this professional Scrum competency site, we also have this PSM1 suggesting reading slides where are other focused area and book recommendations. Later also we see uh, a few book recommendations that I heavily recommend you to read. There are a lot of other books that you could read. You don't need to read all of them. And I think it also won't help you for the assessments. But of course, you get better knowledge when you read these books. So I would recommend you um, read the books by interest and dive deeper in the books that I recommend you later. There's especially one. And then we have um, also a Scrum Master Learning Pass site on the scrum.org website. Um, there you find other information, how your individual path becoming a better Scrum participant or especially Scrum Master could be for you individually. So if there are no hints from your side in the chat box, I would continue now. Then we have here a slide about the professional scrum trainings. And um, this is mostly also taken from the official information of the scrum.org websites. And there are two trainings that can very uh, deeply uh, prepare you for the professional Scrum Master One assessment. This is the professional Scrum Foundations training or the professional Scrum Master training. And taking the course is not required for passing or taking the assessment, but it really helps you to deepen your knowledge 
and your understanding of the Scrum Guide that you already should have. So it also can be a good preparation if the, you have no idea about Scrum, but I would recommend Lee, to visit one of the trainings when you already have a little bit of understanding and knowledge and practice using Scrum. This is especially for the professional Scrum Master training. For the professional Scrum Foundation training, I would say this would be a good choice also when you don't have any idea or when you are in a team and wanna have a team experience as a whole group getting to know Scrum. So professional Scrum Master training, as it said, it's more for Scrum Masters, but everyone can participate who is interested in Scrum. And um, the foundation trainings is more general for all participants. In reality, what I see very often, what we can see in the market is most people visit the professional Scrum Master training. I think this is because it sounds a little bit cooler than the professional Scrum Foundations training. And yes, these trainings are not only helpful on your journey, but also very inspiring. I participate, join several trainings also. I think two times also the professional Scrum Master training and several other trainings I joined also several times. And every time I'm in the training, I learn something new or can share my knowledge and make it um, a priceless experience. Waiting a moment for some chat pieces. Okay, so let's move on. So here are a lot of official details from the certification, from the assessment itself. You said before, it's kind of difficult. I think the most thing that makes it difficult is a challenging time. You only have 60 minutes for the whole assessment and it's 80 questions. So you could not think very long about the answers. You have no time definitely to search in the internet for some information. There is no copy of something or some information of the real questions in the internet. That's great. So it's your, your assessment. And um, the format is there are true false answers and there are multiple choice answers. And every time there um, answers are multiple choice, it's like uh, answer the two best answers. So it's not that you have to know how many answers could be right. There's every time exactly said how many answers are right when there is more valid option as in a true false answer. So the difficulty is intermediate, not too hard, not too bad. So English only, sometimes there are people uh, that are not so very fluent in English that have difficulties to make this assessment. Sometimes I heard it might be a good idea to use a Google Translator uh, I myself don't have so much experience with it. I'm not sure if you need it. If you need it, I would say try it first with the open assessment and then uh, use it also in the real assessment if you think it's useful for yourself. So we already talked about the recommendation courses, the subject areas, the Scrum Open that you could take, the ways to learn more, that is um, 
the le learning path and the competency side. And uh, once you receive a password, that won't expire. So there are two options where how you can get the passport and take the assessment. The one option is you join one of the trainings and then um, you get a free key. In the other case, you pay 150 US dollar and you also get a free key. And um, the good thing when you enter a training is you have a free trial so that during two weeks, when you do the assessment and fail, you could not pass because you don't have 85% passing rate answers right, you get another key that is not expired by date. Okay, so passing score 85%, 80 questions, time box 60 minutes, it means uh, you could around have 12 answers wrong to still pass the assessment. Okay, here we have another question. It's when are we going to take the test now that we have joined this training? Um, I'm not sure if you mean this webinar or the training in itself. I think it's a training and the training. So after the training, the trainer uploads your information to scrum.org and normally on the same day, you will get the key to pass, to take the assessment. That means normally in the same evening, you could take the assessment, but I think it's a better idea to take some time to reflect what happens in the training, go through the reference material that you got, go through your handouts, and then during the first two weeks, do the assessment first time and hopefully pass. Did this answer your question, Akilesh? Oh, then we have here another question regarding the cost of the training. Uh, I'm not sure, so this is heavily depending on, on the country where you take this training. And uh, as I'm trainer in Germany, the training is about 1,000, 1,200, maybe 1,500 uh, euro. This is like 1,000 to 1,300 US dollars. I think in other countries, especially in second world or third world countries, the um, training is less in course, but how much, I don't know. So there's a possibility you look on the scrum.org website and there's a full list of trainings and you can filter it by your language and also filter it by the class you want to join and also filter it by the country. And this information, then you have a short list and then you can look what's the exact price of your training. Do we have other questions here? So let's move on. The next slide, your individual pass and validated learning. It's like every journey is individual. So take your time that you need and think about what's the best for you. There is not like the best way or the best um, things you have to do in a procedure way form. It's more about yourself and find out what's best for you. 
and the Scrum Master Learning Pass, this site where we have this link here, can guide you on your journey. And there are a lot of areas of expertise and also then information that helps you to understand these areas. So I drink a little bit. So next slide is about Scrum.org and uh, our mission is to improve the profession of software delivery and uh, we say we are the home of Scrum and uh, we really are, are, are proud of and standing back about our mission and enjoy people to help them on their journey and make them better doing Scrum. So oh, the next side, I think this is really interesting for you as people that want to pass this assessment and um, get some useful tips how to pass it. And um, even if you join the training or do it by yourself, you could really um, use these things here that I collected to help you passing this assessment. So the first thing is what really is super important that you rock the open assessment before you start the real assessment because a lot of these questions in the real assessments are taken out of the open assessment and if you know really already quickly, very quickly the answer then you um, you have more time for the challenging questions that there are in the real assessments. Um, the open assessment questions are more the easier questions and um, there are harder questions. Every minute that you have is very valuable. And um, then there are, are two other platforms that you can use to prepare uh, as an open assessment for the real assessment. This is the Professional Scrum Master One Practice Assessment that is from a trainer colleague of me and he provided this for a lot of assessments, for nearly mostly every assessment there are, and there are very good uh, questions and answers that can help you. And uh, there's another, it's called PSM1 Preparation Quiz by another guy. I don't know him personally. Um, I didn't work so much with this open assessment, but I heard from a lot of colleagues of mine who pass the PSM1 assessment that they found this site very helpful big to prepare for this assessment. Um, I checked this, this uh, questions and answers and what I found out that there are good and that uh, there are more. It's like 80 questions like in the real assessment that you can run through. There are a lot of other sites that you also can find to prepare you for this assessment. Mm, I don't know them all. I would only recommend this both, especially the first one. And then when you do the, the assessment, when you plan the assessment, so it's a one hour time box. Challenging because so many questions sit somewhere in silence and look that no one will disturb you and that you can concentrate so that you are focused when you do the assessment and really can give your best during this hour. Mm. I already talked about this uh, plugin, this Chrome Translator plugin, 
and then the points that I noted here that could help you during assessment. So there is a bookmark functionality and uh, I would recommend you every time that you're not sure what is the right answer, use the bookmark functionality. And uh, before you enter the bookmark, then uh, best guess. Really think what might be the best answer and then hit the bookmark. So in this case, in the end, the time runs out, you already have an answer. And very often, um, the first answer is a good answer. And you longer and longer and longer you think about the answer, this answer normally tends to be not such a good answer. And then when you run through all the, um, the questions and mark the answers, and you should have some time that you can go through your bookmarks. Um, so when you're not sure about the right answer about one question, um, I would recommend you to, to use the exclusion procedure so that you can answers that mm, could not be correct because of some rules that are violated regarding the scrum guide. And uh, you can read forward and backward to the answers and look to the question again, look what makes sense, and then uh, think what really could not be, and then think about the only a few answers that are valid. Then the next point is that the wording is very important, important sorry, and uh, the wording often makes a real difference and especially in some cases like if there is written must, should, could or something like this. This is super important because it makes a huge difference if in the answer is something written with must or with could. The next point here I have, so don't start interpret interpreting what you read. Use only the information that you have in the question and don't start thinking what could be the background of this situation. This normally won't help you. And then um, strongly take into concern the Scrum Guide, as we already said, and the principles of empiricism and self-organization that are the two most fundamental pieces of principles that you should use to think about what is the right answer. Another very important thing are the scrum values from the behavior and thinking about regarding to the scrum guides, what might be the, the right answer in, uh, for the questions that are coming there. Yeah, and one last tip here. So long answers with several good keywords tend to be correct. On the other side, it's very important. Sometimes there are keywords that you know, mm, this might not be a good answer, like uh, fully planned or totally uh, detailed or hard ring sprint or sprint null. By the way, everything you don't know from the scrum guide or from your training experience that you have like I said, no hardening sprint or sprint null, release sprint, release retrospective, whatever. All these things that you don't heard in the scrum guide, not in the training, no, they might not be. They are not correct. They are not correct. Do we have some questions regarding my tips here?
So these are my book recommendations that I collected for you. Uh, of course, you should very know well the Scrum Guide. You can read it often. Every time you read it, you will find some new, uh, new points in the Scrum Guide. So the thing is really, it's only 16 or 19 pages regarding the language. But in this small amount of pages are huge of information and everything, every word really counts in it. And it gives you some part of interpretation and you are not totally sure every time if it's a rule or recommendation. Think about it. And then uh, a more detailed view on this, but very, very precise also, is the Scrum Pocket Guide from Günther Verheyen. It's a small book uh, of about around 100 pages. And all information in this book is super valid and super important. And it gives you more background of Scrum, uh, agility, business agility, empiricism, forecasting, everything you should know about Scrum. use this book very well. One book you can read about Scrum. And then I have another book here, Scrum Insights for Practitioners from Hayan Doshi. And um, as it said, yes, it's more for practitioners. And uh, I'm not sure if it's 100% important to read this book for preparing the assessment, but for preparing the real life and knowing how to facilitate the, the meeting, the events in Scrum and so on, uh, what you have to take in mind when you run something, this is a very, very valuable book that can help you to master your challenging situations that you have in reality when you use Scrum. We have some comments here, some questions. So let's move on. Then I have here some useful tips, additional knowledge hut resources. This is uh, stuff that is collected already by knowledge hut. And all these links will give you um, insights in videos or in blog posts that are um, published by colleagues of mine and from the knowledge hut. Uh, I already told you, you will get the slides after the webinar and you can follow these links and find more detailed information of all the stuff that I was talking about before. So we mostly run through the information that I wanted to provide to you. We have more time for questions. What do you want to know? What is missing? Oh, do you really know already everything? Okay. 
Okay, we are having a question here. Oh, two questions. Question number one from Akilesh. Is there a document or portal where we can find more information about these trainings, please? Yeah, the one portal you can use is the portal from the Knowledge Hub and search for Scrum Master Training, Professional Scrum Master Training. Or the other portal that you can use is the uh, official scrum.org website. And um, there you can go to find the training and then uh, view course schedules. And then you find this page with the filters that I explained before. And uh, in the slides, you will find this link also. And then we have another question here. How to reach out to you for any question going forward? Do we have any groups? Oh, actually, I don't think we have any group. My uh, information, my email address is also in the slides. You will, can find me on LinkedIn or other social media portals. And if you want to connect with me, have additional questions, if I can help you, feel free to contact me and I'm glad to help you. Also, there are groups, as I know, in um, at scrum.org, we have a forum that you can use on LinkedIn. There is, for example, a group called Scrum Practitioners. And there's also a group for scrum.org where you can post questions and read uh, the answers and start collaborating with the people to find more about what are the insights in using Scrum? We have other questions. We have still some more time we could use. Maybe you have some question from, from, from the Scrum Guide or questions regarding Scrum that you want some help. Regarding training, the assessment, the history of Scrum, the future of Scrum, the present of Scrum. So then let's move on. You have some time now to provide feedback to me. I would say we're done. Thank you very much for your time that you take. Uh, good luck on your journey, much fun and uh, great success, great products and strum on. And feel free to connect to me. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for joining me.